Hello and welcome. It's been two years since the launch of the Intel Arc GPUs, giving us hopefully yet another competitor in the AMD NVIDIA war that seems to be never ending. For consumers, it was a great thing. But there were lots of problems, lots of issues with the cards initially, lots of driver concerns when the GPU originally launched. So in this video, two years later, we're going to have a look at this review, look at this Intel GPU and its performance is the A750. And I was able to pick this up used off of Facebook Marketplace locally for about $230 Canadian. I want to talk about this GPU because I think this is overlooked and this is a hidden gem here. I've picked it up mainly for encoding my stream so I can offload the workload for streaming from my main GPU which I use for 4K gaming here which is the RTX 4070. So I've got this with the 4070 in one desktop PC here. We'll talk about the performance and stay tuned till the end for a bonus reveal about how 4K gaming fares on the Intel A750. Let's talk briefly about the specs and get that out of the way first so we can get to the juicy stuff here. So this is the Intel Arc A750. It's part of the Z line of uh, uh, products from Intel, formerly called Alchemist. Launched in quarter three of 2022, it's got 28 Z cores here, which is important to note, and 28 ray tracing units as well. So nice to see that right out of the gate, Intel with their discrete GPU has provided an option for ray tracing so we can enjoy all the visual goodness. Two gigahertz clocks here, 220 29 teraflops and 225 watts of full board power although it, it modestly consumes a lot less than that so we'll talk about that and power consumption a little bit later 8 gigabytes of gddr6 memory so nice to see that they didn't gimp out with 6 gigabytes or even perhaps 4 gigabytes on the lower end keep in mind the intel arc released in 3 5 and 7 series in terms of the gpu so this is the highest line of uh, gaming oriented products from uh, intel's arc lineup and their initial offering we do get hdmi 2.1 port here and the DisplayPort 1.4 port. There are four supports, four ports on the GPU supported total with a maximum resolution over HDMI of 4K60 and maximum resolution at 8K60 over DisplayPort. That said, we do have this juicy goodness here with all of the hardware encoders for H.264, 265, AV1, and Bitstream. If you're streaming to YouTube, particularly and doing 4K HDR gaming, this AV1 encode and decode is going to be an absolute lifesaver. You can go really, really high bit rates here uh, and capture and then scale that down to really nice, crisp, and very visual quality visual fidelity for your YouTube streams there. As I mentioned, we have ray tracing support. We also have open API support, and we've got Vulkan support as well. So pretty much all of the goodies here that can be there a quick look at some synthetic benchmarks here we start off with blender and we can see 973 points 39 and 528 in monster junk shop and classroom respectively with the intel arc a750 featuring 8 gigabytes of vram a respectable showing compared to the other offerings and then into some 3d mark benchmarks here you can have a quick look through these and pause where you need to but overall the testing strategy of this was running at 1440p resolution and uh, using the native resolution of the display that I had running here with then Ryzen 9 9900X uh, running at full tail about 5.3 to 5.5 gigahertz on the CPU speeds with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 megahertz RAM and an MSI Carbon X870E motherboard with the latest build that I just put together a few days ago. Uh, that said here we can see some very respectable performance with DDMark and these synthetic benchmarks getting very very good numbers here compared to what you would see with, with the nvidia comparators of course not as high as those numbers but keep in mind that this is a a used gpu it's two more than two year old tech now and we're seeing this for around two to 250 dollars in the used market at Looking at the benchmarks here, starting at 1440p with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, most of these was benchmarks were run at either ultra, ultra high, or some equivalent preset in most of these games that would represent the highest settings in the game. In certain cases, I did find crashing. For example, in Borderlands 3, it refused to run on the Arc GPU with DX12, so I had to swap it back to DX11 and it ran just fine. With Company of Heroes 3, we're seeing here a variety of different games, but the basic story is that it's the performance is a little bit all over the place unless you tweak the settings turn it down perhaps from ultra uh, to high or to medium or a mix of high and medium you're not going to be able to get 60 fps without zss 
the upscaling technology that's provided by Intel in many of these games. It's a mixture of modern games. For example, Dragon's Dogma here is a great example. We got only 30 FPS roughly and uh, lots of dips down into the low 20s there. Not a playable experience. And if you need to play that game and enjoy it, I would say turn it down to high or perhaps even medium and allow that to, uh, and you may need to make use of FSR as well in that game since it does not include ZSS and Intel upscaling. So here is an example for spoken here with ZSS ultra quality setting. And you would think that this, this would be just as good as NVIDIA or at least as good as AMD's offering, but that is truly not the case here running at the 1440p resolution. You can see that this uh, uh, benchmark here is barely, it's struggling to hit 30 FPS and there's lots of parks even in the benchmark itself where you'll see the performance tip down to around 20 FPS. Now, that's not to say that ZSS is a bad solution, but considering that this is at least two years old tech, if you include the planning and the integration and all of that phases, it was perhaps designed even prior to that. You can see some flickering, some texture pop in, uh, some dancing pixels as well. So there is certainly some issues with ZSS that still need to be sorted out. Uh, that said though, this was one of the highlight games that I chose because it has AMD's FSR, ZSS, as well as NVIDIA's DLSS support to be able to offer a comparison across all three different upscaling decks. Perhaps we'll save that comparison for a different video going into 2025. That said, I'm using the latest Intel driver for Intel graphics uh, issued November 12th here, so that shouldn't be an issue. As you can see here that this game's benchmark is a representation perhaps of the most stressful case because there is a lot of uh, environmental effects here if you look at what's being rendered in the game though however i just don't see what is so taxing here i don't see a lot of npcs i don't see a lot of characters i don't see a lot of dynamic lighting in the environments but you know this is one of the showcase games for intel zss or was at the time of launch in 2023 it has thus been uh, basically abandoned because it was a complete uh complete and utter failure uh, financially and you know business wise I don't think it really sold very much and I did play a, a little bit of this game it it I just felt it was very boring, rehashed, the story was uninteresting, not to beat down on this game, but as you can see in this scene here, as we swap in, we're roughly getting about 23 frames per second, that's very, very low, maybe it's the lighting effects there, there are certain things that Intel ZSS seems to struggle with, uh, usually though, if you crank down the graphic settings from ultra to high or to low, you get a significant bump up in performance in terms of the frame rates here, so this is looking at QHD resolution for 1440p in just a moment here we'll also look at fhd resolution and i'll show you guys what the difference is particularly in this game dropping down from 60 fps down to 30. the one game i did pick and, and wanted to test uh, quite significantly was dragon's dogma 2 uh, however i haven't had a chance to do that for a qhd resolution we will however demonstrate that at fhd resolution and we'll talk about running it at medium settings and using fsr how we can actually get very close to that 60 fps experience at the native QHD resolution here that we want to play at. Now Intel has targeted the ZSS and particularly the ARC 7 series of GPUs. This one here is the A750. So the A750 and A770 are targeted at you know very much uh, uh, QHD or 1440p resolution for gaming. That said though, I found this to be a mixed bag. As you'll see here some, from some more of the uh, benchmarks that it isn't a smooth sailing experience across the game. Some games ran very close to 60. Some games ran you know, around 30 FPS. Some games ran about 40 FPS. It was a little bit all over the place with the exception game, exceptional game running 70 to 80 FPS or well above that 60 FPS mark that we'd like to see in these games. With a modern GPU. Now keep in mind that this GPU released two years ago, uh, that is 2022, but this can be had on the used market quite inexpensively. And if you're mainly targeting just 1080p gaming, you're okay with full HD, don't care too much about ultra level quality details. If you're spending that much on a GPU, I would assume that you're probably looking for more value and bang for your buck rather than just ultra and being able to turn every setting slider up and say, hey guys, look, this is cool. So if you take it from that perspective, the ARC GPUs, I think, offer a fantastic value 
value and bang for buck considering how cheaply uh, they can be had on the used market now there's still a few units around in the wild but it's in, in new ones at least it's very very hard to come by now uh, they're getting less and uh, fewer by the day you may be able to find a few refurbs or some uh, unopened box uh uh, versions on on uh, ebay but the intel uh, native version that i have here this is directly from intel the arc a750 uh, is getting very very difficult to find i would love to have gotten an a770 but this was all i was able to get my hands on so ghost of tsushima is another zss game but as you can see there it fares a little bit better but there's lots of frame dips there down to you know 40 fps or so a uh, hogwarts did surprisingly well despite these frame dips here it actually ran at a very stable 60-ish uh, FPS. Pretty good gameplay experience. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, if you turn it down a notch below Ultimate, you can easily hit a 60 FPS lock there. Very enjoyable game and a great experience. Marvel's Gardens of the Galaxy was the standout game here, running at well above 80 FPS despite those frame rate dips. Not sure what the explanation for that is. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, this is the remastered version, or sorry, the release of the original game for PC by Sony. And this game ran quite well. Of course, it's many, many years old now. Returnal here, very heavy and demanding game with lighting effects and rendering. I uh, ran roughly at 30 FPS. Not a playable experience if you want to have uh, an enjoyable time with that game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a few years old now, but at 1440p still can be taxing and demanding. And that's represented here by barely 45 FPS. Uh, the Witcher 3 with ZSS set to auto. I was getting crashes in the other modes. I'm not sure why I was running at around 80 FPS. Very playable but again many many years old total war warhammer 3 at about 1440p ultra is going to give you roughly 30 to 40 ish fps i mean it's more of a strategy game so perhaps you don't really need high frame rates in this one playable space marines 2 the latest in the series from warhammer 40,000 barely hit 30 fps this game was struggling i had to turn fsr quality on in order to get uh, any level of uh, game playability that said though because all of these games don't support zss it can be a struggle to get a smooth playable experience and you have to in often cases enable amd's fsr which is independent of gpus and can run across nvidia amd or even intel's gpus Looking at benchmarks at 1080p here, starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, ultra high benchmark, you're getting about 60 FPS, Borderlands 3 now jumps well above 60 FPS and stays there for the most part, Company of Heroes 3 easily above 100 FPS at this point at 1080p with maximum settings and no upscaling. Uh, Cyberpunk is a little bit tough, but at ultra on 1080p, it does quite well, just as advertised by Intel. F123 is a struggle, it's an exception, not sure why, Far Cry 6 well above 60 FPS, but that's that seems to be the theme as you hit 60 fps on ultra on 1080p uh, with the ghost of Tsushima, that was the one exception around 50 fps and similar story here for returnal a shadow of the tomb raider well above 100 again but most of the time here if you play at 1080 and you like to crank the settings all the way up uh, the arc g50 a750 gpu is really going to get the job done for you if you can find it easily on the used market you're going to have a fantastic time a great GPU choice for a budget build going into 25 while you wait for the new models. All right, and finally as a bonus here, I wanted to show you guys uh, 4K gameplay with one of the latest games here. This is Dragon Age The Veil Guard, a very demanding game, the latest in the Dragon Age series by Bioware. Really enjoying my time with this game. I'm gonna play this here on Intel ZSS using the balanced upscale quality, and we're gonna play here at the native 4K resolution of my display here. Graphics preset, we're gonna select medium, and we'll see how this fares here once we get into the game. Architecture of the Arc GPU is actually scales quite Quite nicely to um, to higher resolution so if you're actually looking to play at a uh, 4k or 4k plus resolution this you can actually have a pretty playable experience here with this uh, arc GPU. you can see here in our gdp or excuse me tdp we're getting about 160 watts and we're running fairly well at about 47 fps it's totally playable so this is a little bit of a surprise for uh, at least myself and maybe for some of you considering that it was struggling with some games at 1440 
1440p. I, I'm quite pleased to see how well ZSS, when implemented correctly, can do in a game for you, especially at a higher resolutions here. So if you're one of those guys who are looking to get a 4K setup, don't mind tweaking and playing with the settings a little bit so you can lock on to that, you know, FPS range that you want to play at. And we're getting, you know, lock 30. So this is a very console-like experience, what you'd get from a PS5 uh, for a fraction of the cost here. You can put together a pretty nice budget PC where just a few hundred dollars grab up grab this uh, GPU off the used market from friends uh, or from friends and family uh, I was gonna say Facebook marketplace but hey friends and family works as well uh, if you grab this GPU you know 4k resolution not all games mind you will play this smoothly or this well on this GPU but this was a little bit of a surprise considering that it's very it's one of the latest games here obviously though something to point out in settings uh, if you go to graphics here, that means at medium settings, you're not going to be getting any ray tracing or any ultra ray tracing detail on. Uh, but that said, if you're just looking to enjoy the game, this game looks visually pretty good anyway, that you're not going to have any issues with having a good time at 30 FPS. Now, mind you, uh, when you're in heavy combat scenes, it may drop down a little bit. Uh, but that said, I, I'd like to play uncapped. It gives you a little bit of extra room there or headroom uh, with the FPS. You see that we're heading about 45-ish roughly FPS. That means in heavy combat sessions where there's lots going on on the screen, it may drop, but hopefully you still won't drop below that 30 for a good gameplay experience. If you look at our 0.2% lows, we do see those dips down to the mid-20s. So it certainly isn't uh, all uh, you know all rainbows and unicorns here, but it's something nice to show off. And I want you guys to see this that hey this thing is actually a very capable little gpu i'm very looking forward to actually the next generation from uh, intel the battle mage gpus which will perhaps be announced uh, next month in december of 2024 hopefully bring competition back to at least the mid range and the low range would be great you know amd seems to have backed up from the high range as well it's going to be 5090 all the way across sitting up at the premium tier of the gpu market but that said i'm quite all right and very happy to have lots of competition in the low to mid range most of us will spend under a thousand dollars for our gpus it just simply doesn't make sense to be spending two thousand or more on a 5090 we'll leave those to the elites here uh, but that said a great little experience so i think it's a very good demo here i uh, hope you enjoyed my review a long-term review of the arc a750 i think it's a fantastic little gpu it can certainly play everything at 1440p with a few settings turned down and at 1080p it's just fantastic all around if you can find it used on the marketplace i think it's going to be a great build or a great uh, addition to any budget build so thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe share this across your con your channels to help this channel grow and we'll see you in the next video